Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa from the Open Blessing Church headquarters in Nairobi. And I come to you this morning on the Scripture Prescription Program, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm excited and blessed as always to speak the word of God into our lives and I've got no doubt that the Lord is indeed going to speak to us. The Lord is going to be a blessing to us and that your life will never ever be the same again. This morning, I would like to talk about a subject I've titled Get Out of Bondage. Get Out of Bondage. And I want to pray and then we'll listen to the voice of the Lord. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again this morning. We thank you for the privilege to be called your children. Thank you for the time that you have provided for us to hear your word. I pray this morning in Jesus' name that you're stretching forth your hand of power, your hand of authority and grace to speak to our lives this morning, my Father. I submit to you as a servant of God that you minister to us, my master, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, be glorified and be honored in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning. As I've said before, we are talking about a message I have titled, Get Out of Bondage. Allow me to describe what bondage is before we read scripture. Now, bondage is a kind of servitude or subjugation to a controlling person or force. Young people could be in bondage to drugs, for instance. Servitude or subjugation to a controlling person or force. So when we say somebody is under bondage, we mean they are under the control of a person or a kind of force. There are people who don't want to involve themselves in alcohol anymore, but there is a force. There is a push for them to continue to maintain their alcoholism. There are people who are under bondage of many other things. They are doing things that they are not feeling comfortable to do anymore. It could be immorality. It could be many other things that you are under bondage. You want to live a life that is right, but you find that there's a compelling force pushing you to do that which you do not want to do. And I'm here to say that our God exists to get us out of bondage. There are people who have been under bondage that they have recklessly spent the money they have and they have got nothing to show for it. There are those people who are engaging in characters that are not correct. And yet, they, as much as in their hearts they desire not to do these things, they find themselves under some compulsion, either by influence of people because of their company or by a certain force they don't understand how to deal with. The Bible tells us, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. So you could be under bondage because of the company that you keep. And you must make up a decision to be out of that company as quickly as possible. There are people you coalesce around and you have growth in your life. But there are also people you coalesce around that lead you into destruction. These are issues we have to consider. These are issues we have to think about. And these are issues we have to make decisions on. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I read the Bible in the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter number 4. We are going to read verse number 8 through to verse number 10. Galatians chapter number 4, we are reading verse number 8 through to verse number, actually number 11. But then, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I'm afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Now, I want you to understand that many times the things that bring us under bondage are not godly. 
God came to make us free and to be free indeed. Now, there are certain issues that we want to observe in our lives that you feel afraid if you do not do those things. There are many cultural applications in the lives of many people that people feel that they are enslaved to this kind of activity, that if they don't do it, they feel they have wronged the society. Now, I want you to know that God came, or Jesus came, at, until he came to, and, and ended up at the death on the cross. The basic idea was to free humanity. It was to bring us to a freedom where we would observe according to the design of our lives with God, that we live according to his precepts and guidance. Now, where you find yourself under bondage of fear, that if you did not do a particular thing, there is a threat that something negative would happen in your life, that is a clear sign of bondage. When we come to Christ, when we come to God, the Bible tells us we are free. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Now, when we believe in God, we believe so that God can give us the freedom to worship him to live a life of freedom. Now, when I say somebody is bound, you've said you're under subjugation, under either a person or there is a fear of a certain force that if you didn't do some things in a particular way, then things will not go right with you. I'm here to proclaim some freedom in your life. Now, if you're bound, you're bound. There are people who cannot asleep without doing something. Some people are so bound that they have to engage in drug abuse because they are bound. They simply cannot do without it. There's a compelling force, a compelling power that causes them to move in the direction that even themselves, when you ask them for real, they will tell you, I'm not comfortable to do the thing that I'm doing. There are people who are bound with certain characters, certain behaviors, they are under bondage. They are unacceptable. You know that these things are not correct. In fact, you are ashamed to do them. But you do, you do not only do them, you are compelled to do them. You are under bondage. But Christ came that we can be removed from that bondage and be made free and continue to live according to what God desires of us. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you ever looked at people and you felt pity for them? You know that they are going through a situation they can't help themselves. They, they, it's like there's a place of hopelessness. They don't know what to do. And you know that if they continue in that path, that path can only lead to destruction. The writer of the Bible tells us that to which, but now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage. Now, listen to me, child of God, wherever you're following us from. There are things you can make human decisions and stop. For instance, you can change your company. If you've got no, there's no benefit you're making by sitting in a specific company, you can make a decision to change that company. As I've said, Bible tells us, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Now, there are places you go and you feel drained. You have to get out of there quickly. Now, that is when it's within your power to make certain decisions to come out of specific places or company that disrupts your growth pattern. You can get out of that immediately. It's a choice you make. Now, I've preached a message many years ago, which I called stupid generosity. You know, you go out there and compliment every lady you see that they are smart or they are dressed properly or, you know, and yet you have not done that to your spouse. That is stupid generosity. You can go to a place and, you know, make people have merry, buy for them meals and drinks. Now, if you do not do that sufficiently for your family and you do it out there, that is stupid generous. In fact, you are under bondage. Praise the Lord. If you can do everything for people out there except your family, you are under bondage. 
In fact, the Bible encourages us that a man of God must be able to take care of his family. In fact, show leadership to their family. That's what the Bible tells us. And so when we look at life generally, there are people who are bound. Some are bound in behavior. Some are bound in expenditures. Some are bound in engaging themselves in activities that can only destroy their bodies. It's under bondage. And this morning, I appear before you as a man of God to speak that the Lord intends or desires for us to be free and to be free indeed. That we cannot afford to continue to be bound the same way our forefathers were bound. Praise the name of the Lord. And sometimes you, you look at life and you see that there is a pattern of bondage in specific families. You know that certain things must happen at particular times to particular people, probably even named after a particular name. That is a bondage and we have to break that kind of bondage in the name of Jesus Christ. There are things we have to break ourselves from. And you see, when you see a pattern, specifically a negative pattern, you must make up your mind and a decision to break out of that bondage in the name of Jesus. Now, some things are literal, you can clearly see. You can see, for instance, that a particular person named after a particular name, a particular generation, and named over generations, the things that happen to these people continue to happen to people that are named after that name. It's a bondage. And you have to ask God to intervene and dissociate yourself from those particular occurrences in your life. It's a bondage. Now, when we talk about God's reality in our lives, we mean God means, well, I'm not speaking these things to cast fear in the lives of people. No, the God we believe has got the power and ability to set us free and to be free indeed. I have no doubt in my mind. There are things you have to do within the strength of your own human capacity to get out of. If there are places you go and they continue to drain your resources, they continue to make you lose your energy and capacity to do the things you'd want to do. Get out of that quickly in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we'll say it is difficult to leave a company which I've known for too long. But if it is bringing destruction to your life, you must make a decision to come out of it quickly in the name of Jesus. Now, this that that requires spiritual intervention. The first thing that you must do is to acknowledge that you need help. Even in normal circumstances, you know, counseling will not work unless the person accepts in their lives that they need counseling. If you don't accept you need counseling, you might not be helped. And when you accept that you need counseling, it means you have accepted that there is a problem. God does not desire us to be under bondage. He rather desires that we could be free and be free indeed. The Bible tells us to him whom the son sets free is free and is free indeed. Some of us, God rescued us. We are involved in difficult negative things before. We were lost in alcoholism. We were lost in immorality. We are lost in bad things. But the Lord came through for us. That we can stand now and say the Lord has made us who we are. It is possible for you. It is possible. It is possible for you. It's possible. Anyone. Bible tells us, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. All of us, the Lord can indeed come through for us and help us to get out of bondage. I want to make a prayer this morning. And it's my prayer and desire that the Lord is going to set people free in the name of Jesus. And when God does it, be free to share with us the testimony about what God would have done in your life. Shall we pray? Everlasting and ever-living God, I thank you this morning. Thank you, Father, for helping us to understand that we need to get out of bondage. I pray this morning in the name of Jesus that you'll open the eyes of everybody to understand areas that they could be bound. And Father, this morning I speak the freedom of God. We break every yoke of Satan in the lives of people. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Be free of alcoholism. Be free of immorality. Be free from reckless expenditures of money. Be free to love your family. Be free to go back to your family and children. And children, I command you this morning in the name of Jesus to renew relationship with your parents in the mighty name of Jesus. Parents, renew your relationship with your children in the name of Jesus. We break every bond of the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. And we ask our Father that you manifest through your grace and through your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because yokes are broken, chains are broken, and people are free from now moving forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, be exalted and be honored. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The good Lord bless you. The good Lord be with you. The good Lord stand with you. And the good Lord continue to make you to be free in the name of Jesus. This has been your host and your servant, Reverend Johnston Sakwa from the Open Blessing Church Headquarters, Nairobi, coming to you live on the scripture prescription. Your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, we have discussed the element of getting out of bondage. You are free in the name of Jesus. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning by the grace of God. Shalom, and the Lord deeply bless your life. Amen and amen.